assign it until we leave. Hopefully it will not be long. We should always be prepared for a minimum or for a maximum shift of how long? 12 hours. 12 hours. Be prepared for up to 12 hours. Trust me, we don't go beyond 12 hours. Then why? You make mistakes when you become tough. Your brain starts shutting down. Mm -hmm. Especially when you've been in that high in, high intensity environment for that long and been under that type of stress. After 12 hours, trust me, you feel like you not only ran the Boston Marathon, you ran it three times. You're exhausted, your brain is mush, and you're lucky if you can remember your name, let alone your call sign. All right. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, maybe you'll get to it, I don't know, but um, could you sort of go over an example of what this might look like? Let's say all of a sudden there's a warning for a tornado or something. Let's say we go to the 470 repeater, we're listening. We're going to get to that. We'll get to the alerts and all that later in the day. Okay. All right. <coughs> We're going to keep on going since we stop. Or start a little late. How about the served agency? Attitude. What has attitude got to do with it? Everything. Absolutely everything. You walk in there like a jerk, they're not going to be happy. You walk in there with an attitude of I'm in charge, you're going to find out really quickly you're not. You walk in there with the attitude of, I'm here to help. What do you need me to do? You're going to embrace you. Okay. You might be asked. You walk in. Okay. Gaff walks in the door. And I look at him and he comes in. I'm here. What do we need to do? So Gaff, I need you to go up and relieve Carolyn right now at the signing desk. The moment she was sitting there when you signed it, go relieve her. I need her to do something else. That's what you do. Okay. Yeah. Mark walks in. What do you need me to do? Mark, I need you to go over here and get the coffee pot in. That would be dangerous. I don't drink coffee. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I told the team. Don't ever ask me to make coffee unless you want to drink 40 weight motor oil. <laughs> uh, and they, they know that. But it's the whole premise of we do what we're asked. We do what they need. Because part of Oxcom Part of what we're doing is giving them the ability to free up the people that they need that have a whole lot higher qualifications than we might have and that have the authority. That's even more important. They have the legal authority to do other things that we don't have the authority to do. So if we can relieve those people, it enhances the operation. Even if for 15 minutes, doesn't matter. Okay. The attitude of amateur radio operators has been a problem more and more, all over the place. So we're really harping on attitude. It's professionalism, getting the job done with a minimum of fuss. Understand that public safety professionals, when we are operational, we're mission oriented. You understand what mission oriented means? That means we're going to get done what needs to get done. We ain't got time for BS. We ain't got time for nonsense. We ain't got time to deal with people that do not know what they're doing. We ain't got time to take teach them. You just walk in knowing your job with a good attitude and being able to get it done, you stay out the door. We just don't have time for it. We're dealing with people's lives. So we do whatever we can within reason to accomplish the goal. We do not want to be part of the problem. We want to be part of the solution. That's what we're there for. The whole goal. So who works for whom? Who works for us? Why at the wonder? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's it. I don't know. I heard Wyatt has an attitude. <laughs> <laughs> he can, trust me. <laughs> Okay, uh, so I mean the thing is we work for the volunteer, we work for our served agency. Can you fire a volunteer? 
Could yes. a volunteer be fired? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, hell yes. I've done it. Okay. How do we do that? You're fired. I don't just turn around and go, Ron, you're fired in front of 30 people. Okay. Hmm? Privately. Quietly. We bring them aside. We will have a witness. Okay. Let's say you had to fire Mary, which I would really, really hate to do. Okay. It wouldn't just be me and Mary back here in the room having a discussion where I fire and tell them to go home. Linda would be with us. I would have somebody of the same sex in the room as a witness. How would you fire a volunteer? Oh. Attitude. Attitude is one. You can't even do it. People can't do it. People Seth. fall apart. <laughs> if, they can't, if they can't handle it, they're seeing too many signs of stress and are making too many mistakes. Okay, If they're becoming a detriment to the operation. If people can't work with them, okay. If Ken comes up and says, "Harlan, I love her, but I can't work with her," I got a tough choice to make. Okay. So, yeah, hey Ken, you're going home. <laughs> All right. Remember, they are technically our employers. They're in charge. They're going to give us the orders and the marching orders and all that good stuff. We do what they do within what. Within the constraints and federal communication regulations and regulators. We can't do something that's illegal. Can we make a one time broadcast, a one way broadcast? Can we? I see heads shaking up. I see heads shaking up. Yes. Can I make a one time broadcast? Can I make a one time broadcast? Can I make a, a broadcast over amateur radio? that talks about shelter locations. If you need shelter, go here. This is where the shelters are. Yes. Can I make that yes. radio yes. announcement? Only if you're authorized. I see heads shaking no, I see heads shaking yes. Okay, you want the answer? The answer is we can, with a caveat. All other normal routine communication systems must be failed. They must be inoperable. We must be the only means to get that message out. Then we can do it. Now, if I'm passing that traffic, for example, I'm talking to Jim. I'm saying, hey, Jim, here's where our shelters are. Run through these shelters and do something for me. That's not a one-way broadcast or a one-time broadcast. It's not really a broadcast, it's communications, right? Yes, it is. The broadcast is what? It's too late. Wait, talk broadcast. One Attention way. everybody. Here it is. It's global. Nobody really, not a two-way communication. It's a one-way out there. <clears throat> okay. All right. How about... What happens if we don't have good relationships? <laughs> it doesn't last long. Believe it or not, we have an excellent relationship with Winston Salem Forsyth County Emergency Management Office. They have truly embraced us, the county has. And they look at us as a very positive, viable entity and asset. The state of North Carolina does the same with amateur radio. North Carolina is, is one of the lead states for Oxford. They have become the model. They're pushing the envelope. Or they're showing people just how, how, how things work with amateur radio and what a positive impact it is. Wednesday, I was at the UC. I was at the UC <coughs> all day long. <coughs> They were operating a large scale disaster drill in the U.S. All over statewide, primarily in the eastern part of the state. They encouraged every county to fly. And our county was playing on Thursday because the event ran in three days. 
three-day exercise in the EOC. Pretty intense to see all these folks working and working hard. I go back in the communications area. Boom. They want to go talk to the communications chief and about a couple of things. And I bump into two amateur operators that were in the meeting with the chief and everybody else in the comm section. And I just kind of listened to their briefing <clears throat> as they talked. And it was to make sure that all your radios are up. Test them. Make sure they are working. Who can you communicate with? And they got back into their room. They actually have a separate room, kind of like that. And like we have in our EOC, it's a separate room. And in there, they have four dual band radios, or multi band radios, installed. They also have an HF radio that stays up all the time. And they have, they actually have two. One for Mars and one for amateur. And they are up 24 hours a day, not man, but they're up because they're hooked into their wind link system. Everybody familiar with wind link? We'll briefly touch on that today, but that I, I encourage you to download it, get it on your computer, get make sure you know the interface and how to make it work, because wind link is the primary. That's what we're going to use primarily to go to the state EOC with for messages that have to be relatively secure. <coughs> okay. Did you ever feel that you were less than useful? Mm -hmm. Part -timer? Anybody ever been in the National Guard? Been called a weekend warrior? <coughs> By the guys that are full time? Okay. But you went through the same training, didn't you? Same training they went through. Mm -hmm. Have you been sent through similar training with the professionals? Yes. Sure. You have. Those professionals all have ICS 100, 200, 700, 800. They may also have 300, 400. They may also have a couple other classes. But you got some of the basic stuff they went through. You know how to do it. But remember, if they do refuse your assistance, don't press the issue. Just call them and let me know. It may happen. You may go somewhere and they. Just refuse to let you in the door. Don't push it. Just call me. Let me know. We'll take care of it from a different angle. Okay. <clears throat> Any function. Any function includes communications. Like I said, and we, and we put this out several times. If you walk in solely with the attitude of, I'm going to talk on the radio, that's all I'm going to do. When you come up, you just plop your butt in front of the radios, check on the air, and you sit there. Everybody else is scrambling to get things put on the walls, to get whatever, to do whatever. We just sit there for a little bit of thumbs. Are you being part of the solution or part of the problem? Part of the problem. Part of the problem. You're there to do anything that's necessary. The attitude of I'm only here to communicate? No. That is not a good thing. We will be activated by Forsyth County Office of Emergency Management, not only for disasters, but for public events. We could be activated for work. Concert. Concert. We could be activated for um, Dixie Classic Treasure. Jim and I went down, we, we were asked to come down and during activation for the Guns N' Roses concert. And we were down there. Okay. We can be activated for anything. It's Did you get to choice. see Guns N' Roses? Hmm? Did you get to see them? We got to see the security cameras and watch the drunks walk into the signs a couple, three or four times. <laughs> <laughs> watch one guy walk into a sign. It's, it's this sign on double post. He walks right in, the sign's about this level, just smacks right into it, goes to the ground. Mm. Gets up, shakes himself off, walks right back into it. About three times. Wow. We're like, this is me. That's an idiot. He finally decided to go under the sign. It was really pretty cool. All right, so what could you be used as? A radio operator, even a dispatcher. 
not necessarily dispatching law enforcement, although that could happen. Okay, but you might be asked to be a dispatcher in a legit for their logistics group that's running a bunch of logistical trucks, and they hand you one of their radios and say, "Make sure that you're doing this. Can you make it happen? Do you have the, comp the ability to make that happen? Sure." Pretty simple. Okay. How many people have taken damage assessment courses? If you go online to the to FEMA's uh, Learning Institute, look up ICS 1160. I can't remember. I think it's a 16-hour course. It might be eight hours. Um, but it is one of the few online DHS in the courses <coughs> that is a certification course for most of what you get when you got a uh, when you finished ICS 100. You got a certificate of completion, right? Yes. At the end of 1160, it will give you a certification document that it actually says, "Congratulations, you are now a certified." DHS damage assessment person. <clears throat> you become certified to do that job. I encourage you to take that training because we could use that. You know how many damage assessment folks we have in the county? Five or six. <laughs> That's it. Three. They are our building inspectors. We only have three building inspectors in the county for the whole city and county. And there are damage assessors. We desperately need additional folks. And they know it. <clears throat> All right. We have memorandums of understanding, statements of understanding. The FEMA, DHS, Red Cross, a whole bunch of people. Okay. So understand that they're out there. What those things are is basically it just outlines who does what, who's responsible for what, all that stuff. Forsyth County, if you are part of our OxCom unit and you've completed at least the basic four ICS courses, you're automatically registered as a RACI operator when I put you in a database. Then you are a RACI operator. <laughs> when does races come into being? When come into play? When does it become important? When the president activates the War Powers Act and the FCC takes control of the spectrum. When that occurs, the FCC comes out and says all communications is shut down. All non-essential communications. Nobody, no amateur. Unless they are a registered racing station, can transmit on an amateur frequency. That means Ken cannot call in and find out when she's coming home and ask her to bring a nice steak so he can cook another grill for himself. <laughs> okay? Can't happen. Because on the races, only racing stations can communicate with other racing stations or government stations, and only that government agency. Only official traffic at that point in time. No chit chat. So that's why that becomes important. Is there a possibility that that'll ever happen in our lifetime? Yeah, absolutely. No. Sure. Depends on what Russia does, depends on what you know, we're back we're, we're back to the almost cold war with China. Oh, China. Depends on China, depends on North Korea. Okay. Now it depends on Iran. Um, so it depends on a lot of question before you go on. Uh, yeah. That last that last paragraph, uh, the re the last line, independent study on MIMS and ISIS, is that just the 100, 200, 700, 800? Yeah. Those are the only ones. 7 and 800 are basically the MIMS courses, and 100 and 200 are the ICS. Thank you. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah, those are the courses. Volunteers providing government agencies um, and private organizations are immune from liability. Is something good enough? Yes. 
You are immune from liability. As long as you are acting in the capacity in which you have been requested, you have to be grossly negligent in your actions to or do criminal acts to be found liable. And that is a very high bar for whoever wants to challenge them. It's a very high bar. Grossly negligent means basically what they, they have to prove is that all that Mike knew what he was going to do he would probably kill or hurt somebody, but he did it anyway. That's gross negligence. We're pretty well protected. You're also protected under the state's workers' comp once we have been requested. Those that are operating, you get covered under the statute for volunteers. <coughs> All right, let's talk a little bit about that work there. Anybody want to take a break yet, or do you want to keep rocking for this? Keep going. Trying to catch up. <coughs> All right, network theory and design of emergency systems. Most of you know this is pretty key stuff. What's a network? It's just making sure we go from here to here to here to here to here to here. To here. Just connecting all the points. That's your network. Whatever it takes. Do we have a network? Just for this. We've got the EOC, we've got a repeater, we've got multiple stations out. That's our network. And we have multiple paths, a pathway of getting the information through. That's the key thing. That's what makes your network functional. Single versus multiple destinations. What's a single point destination? The track. I'm message. trying to contact you. Try to contact me. Just between Ron and I. How about multiple points? It's adding three or four or five or six like, or other stations, right? Like a net. A net. <clears throat> now, let's look at the second one. Specific instruction to a particular sh shelter manager. That's kind of like <coughs> we're talking about. It's Ron and me. That's same. But when we do it on the car <coughs> channel, everybody hears, right? So what does that tell you about, we're going to skip a little bit, but what does that tell you about our communications? Not secure. They're public. Not secure. Who said that? Raise your hand. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Man gets a prize, whatever it is. Okay? It's not secure. Everybody can hear what we say. <clears throat> Everybody. And I'm talking about news media. Mm -hmm. Right? So we got to be cautious. How about precisions? High and low. Remember, precision is not accuracy. Precision is something different. We got to receive it accurately. We got to send it accurately. Okay. <coughs> What's low precision? For us, it's worse communications. Why? Easy to make mistakes. Easy to be misunderstood. Be misunderstood. It's slower. It's more difficult. Okay. But we're talking by voice, and I say the guy's name is John Smith. How many different spellings are there? With last name Smith. Well, John and Smith. Yeah. Hmm? John has also got trouble. Spelling. John's got sir. Yeah. Yes. My, my name being Don, and I they asked a fast food restaurant, and I say that, and I come back, and it's called I'm called John Ron Stan once. <laughs> uh, it it just is, it does not come across. And Don D A W Juan. Juan. I finally gone. I finally started saying Julio. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what I use when I go to a restaurant and they ask for my name? What? Me. 
Just in this communication, by voice, it's very difficult at times. You get on HF and you add static, you add the band going up and down, you add the Chinese with their backscattered radar, <laughs> okay, you start adding all this crap, and it really makes it tough to get voice communications through. So, we look more towards the higher precision, which is digital. Is digital, what digital modes are the best? Anybody got an idea? I know everybody's got opinions. But for our uses, what digital modes do we prefer? C4 FM? No. CW. CW is workable, but that's very slow. But it cuts through everything. But it does cut through stuff. <laughs> but not everybody is a good CW operator. But operating CW in an emergency of 40 words a minute is not necessarily the best thing. Dropping it down to 10 to 12 is. Olivia? Okay, we use primarily Winling MT63. Usually it's the 1,000 long. And did that just change? Yes. Weird. My computer has a mind of its own. Okay, and Olivia. We can also use Pactor, which essentially is Winlink, because Winlink runs on a Pactor frame. But we can use Pactor. Those are the ones we primarily use. Be familiar with them and how to use them. Can we encrypt a message? No. no. We cannot legally do that. If a message has to be encrypted and being be sent by Oxcom, we need to turn that message over to a Mars station. Are we familiar with Mars? I'm not talking about the planet where men come from. Okay. Military affiliated radio system. We have to turn that message over to a Mars operator because they have the ability and the authority to encrypt the message where it is secure and they can transmit and that it can be decrypted by another Mars station and we transmit it. Okay. Like I said, there is a Mars station in the state of the right. I am a Mars operator. Mike is working on the K4RLD. He's working on becoming a certified Mars operator. Stacy, W1LLO, is also working on becoming a Mars <coughs> station. I'm also a sheriff station. I'm one, I'm one of two. There's two of us in the state that are shared stations. That permits us to get on DHS, FBI, and everybody else's government treatment system and interface with them as necessary. But there's a little bit more to be a shared station than just uh, some basic training. You, you gotta go through a whole bunch of checks and they don't let everybody on those problems uh, for obvious reasons. All right. So, we want to put digital there. Digital is good for our priority messages. Because we're sure it's going to get through, right? It's high precision. It's going to be very little things on this. How about complexity? How about complexity? I can confuse somebody. It can. I've got two pages. Let's say all four, all of them, front and back, all written out. Here's my message, send it. Wow. 
I can send that by voice. Yeah. It's going to be forever. It's a complicated message. It's best to get it down. The least that you can get it down to. Because what happens, and I've seen this with served agencies. We just went through this back in February on one of our drills. I actually was handed, as a, as a comment, you know, a message from one of our um, sections that needed to be sent out. And he thought the guy wrote a novel. I mean, he put in everything in the world as to he wanted this, he wanted X, this is why he wanted X, this is when he wanted X. And this is the justification for what he asked. And he went on from there. And I looked at him and I said, huh, oh, that ain't more. He goes, why? I said, you need to ask to do what? What are you trying to accomplish? He said, well, I want to accomplish this. I said, okay, here's the mission. X is what's needed. We sent out basically three sentences. We wrote it. That's all it went. Very quick, very easy. As opposed to four pages. So we want to look at those complicated messages. How about maps? Mm -hmm. Digital stuff. I mean, there's a lot of things that we got to look at that we may have to deal with. And it may be sent over our radios, it may be done by fax. Who knows? There are a lot of different ways that things get sent. But trust me, there's a lot of complexity <coughs> in these operations. <coughs> How about time critical messages? We're going to talk about priorities, about precedences later, but we have several precedences. What's the first one? Operational media. What's that mean? It just makes sense. We need to immediately take care of this. It's not an emergency which tops that. Emergency is done for one. You know, and then emergency is essentially somebody's going to die. If we don't do it right now, somebody's going to die. That's an emergency. But operational media, we've got to tackle this now. <clears throat> Priority. Hey, we need to get this done as quickly as we can. Doesn't mean it has to be done now, but as quickly as we can. Health and welfare. Letting people know that everybody's okay. Routine. I need more cots than shelter why. That's a routine message. And then you have the informer. Hey Justin, I need you to go here and relieve this guy if you can. That's an informal message. <clears throat> so we need to get things timely. It might might mean that if we can't do it by radio, we do it by phone, we do it by internet, we do it by however we get through. Okay. What matters is the total elapsed time. And we're going to do this drill sometime here in the fall. We're going to put out a message. I'm going to hand a message to somebody. And I'm going to say, I want you. <clears throat> Here's the message, Ken. On the next net. That's what that message. And it might be being sent to me. He then has to send it to me. Because he's got to answer a question. A little time. How long is it going to take to get this message back? <laughs> and it might tell Wayne to just email me. <laughs> Once he gets an answer question, he email me, so I get it back pretty quick. But how long does it take to get it to him? How does that occur? And we test our communications lines. Can we use the uh, uh, normal messaging type traffic that we do for ham radio as a delivery message, say, like the, uh, the routines and low class? So you know, we can just drop it on our normal messaging traffic here to get that. Mm -hmm. I mean, all because I hand Ken that message and say, I need you to do this, and get this message 
threw it away, doesn't mean he has to wait for it. If I had it to him today, it doesn't mean he has to wait till Thursday. If he hears Blaine check on the air tomorrow afternoon, hey, wait, I got traffic for you. Pass it. Get that message to him. Okay? It doesn't mean waiting. It means getting as quick as possible. It's a priority. Okay? Getting the message through. How do you break into a communication that's occurring? Van and I are talking. I'm that control. Van is the station. We're chatting. We're, we're passing whatever message we have. But you've got something that is a priority or an operational immediate. You know, everybody knows what happens with an emergency, right? All you state is an emergency and everything quiets. Instantaneous. But, you know, Mary's got an operational immediate she wants to throw out. How is she going to break into the communication to save process? Break where it's going to happen. Hmm? Break. 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 Break for operational immediate. That's all she got to say. At that point in time, that control is going to recognize. You know. Man, stand by. Station will operate immediate. So you can. Okay. Okay. And that's part of stuff we talk about in that controller class. But you need to know how to do it. Can you break into a digital conversation? Some modes you can, some modes you can. Mm -hmm. It just varies in the budget. All right. Characters, telephones. Telephones are pretty reliable. Real ones. Real ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some of these Chinese made things are a little challenging. Okay. Real landlines. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, landlines are usually pretty reliable. Cellular is a different story. Cellular can become overloaded in a disaster. Trust me, they yeah. will do. Okay. Believe it or not, back in December when we had the 14 inches of snow, the cellular system in the region became overloaded. People were not able to get through. Because everybody was calling from all over the state, everywhere, all over the country, calling here, or they were calling out to go, I'm okay. That's all they were trying to do. First net, um, with they, their capabilities will allow for emergency traffic at that point instantly. You will well, be prioritized. All cellular, but all cellular right. does, if you've got if you're ready, the phone is registered for you. Correct. <clears throat> well, the problem is, and they've done this back in the days when I worked for at and when they build a switch for a particular area, so <clears throat> like the uh, 922 exchange, there are 10,000 possible telephone numbers for that exchange. Mm -hmm. So it's not rigged for all 10,000 people to get dialed on. Right. They have, it's, it's based on percentage. So how much traffic, so the same thing applies to say this, it's a radio channel. You get a subscription and you hit the button on your phone. And so they've built it for commercial needs. They've not built it for necessarily emergency, which is the reason why you have to register the phone. There is a program. Everybody that gets that, there will be people that have the all staff, all the Oxycon Ring staff, and select EOC. Tom team leads will be provided information to apply and they'll be authorized because I'll have to authorize it and let's see it come up on my system. Um, but DHS has a program, it's called WPS, Wireless Priority System. They also have GETS, which is a landline system. So what that does is put your phone at priority 13 which is the next to the top level on the cellular system. You have to 
type in, you have to punch in codes to get it once you download the app. The app is really nice and all because all I've got to do on the app when I bring it up is you've got the app and I go into my contact list that I want to call Wayne. I go contact, Wayne, send, and what it does is it prioritizes my call, which it, it guarantees I'm getting through to Wayne. And instead of punching in my 12 digit code that identifies my phone and me, it has it already embedded and it just goes right through. And I don't have to do anything to like a normal call. But it's prioritized. Certain people actually, mine's a, mine's a number 14 because I am a first responder. And that makes it a little bit different. And that guarantees. Number 14, what that does is if these two fine gentlemen are chatting on the cell phone and the system is close to overloaded, they're going to get a drop call. Because it's going to knock them off to let my call go through. Recently, or within the last two months, several times, it's not been a busy time of the day. I didn't think, but I've got a, all circuits are busy here. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and it has occurred to me that mm -hmm. if that's a normal day of traffic and an emergency, it must be, it must already be pushed to about the limit. They pretty much are. That's why they're trying to get to the 5G level. Because remember, what's happening on the cellular frequencies? People are talking. People are texting. People are downloading, people are downloading crap on streaming movies. Okay. They're streaming movies, they're looking at porn, they're doing whatever. Okay, and it's all taken up the bandwidth and it's all taken up the frequencies. And the pipe's only so big. Okay. Think of think of all these things as networking stuff. The internet, the cellular system, think of it as a pipe. You can only put so much through that pipe before it backs up. And when it starts to back up, that's where you get the beeping, all circuits are busy, all that nonsense. Okay. Alright, we already talked a lot about cell phones. Okay. Remember, cell phones are, they're good, but all it takes is one hiccup in that system. If they lose their switch, you lose the cellular area. And it's simple to do. And there's no way to go simplex once that happens. Mm -hmm. Cell phone goes down, cell service. If cell goes down, cell goes down. There's no other backup. You know, that, that's why when I live in the back, man, once a mile, I have to come to get a Wi Fi. As far as the power, mm -hmm. they have power to them now so far. I don't have a signal. That's right. Until uh, and, uh, I have called them before to ask them about that. The guy said, well, we've got a power. Okay, thank you. So, I can get back in, in the house on a Wi-Fi system and use the internet. Yeah. Well, your cell phone will use half a watt. Right. Uh, but you don't want any more than that extra head anyway. But uh, the original cell phone is revivals. You know, it's back so, you, know, you, you can lose the power and still get it. <coughs> we do that. Right. But, uh, well, I've got several of them on the back yeah, because they're, they're not <laughs> the specs that they need to be for today. All right, fax machines are pretty good. Just remember they require 120 volts yep. to operate. They also require a phone system. You know. And some laptops actually have a fax feature. Yeah, most of them do. <laughs> Two-way radios. Doesn't matter. Public safety, bus, whatever. So the sideband FM repeater simplex doesn't matter. Pretty much operate on multiple frequencies. We can increase the number of available channels in some cases. The 800 systems cannot. Um, they're pretty much static. 
Um, they're self-contained, they're ideal for broadcasting, and pretty much the problem with them is they suffer from low precision because it's coarse. But when all else fails, does low precision work? Yeah. yeah. How do we help make sure low precision voice communications gets through? Proper use of prowers, phonetic <coughs> alphabet. Proper enunciations. Now that's one thing I've noticed with the public service from the Frank Park Service. They don't follow the NATO type. They have a good yeah, they have a different look. Is that how it sounds like they just went up to the map? I know it's not. It's, it's, it's APCO. It's, there's certain words for each letter, just like yeah. you know, yeah. the yeah. It's, it's more common words. It started, well, it started for, forever. I mean, when they started radio communication, somebody said, we need to do this. So you got Adam, you got Adam Baker, uh, Charles, Dong, and I've got a problem because I work both. Oh yeah, trust me. I've done the data to Trust me, I, more times than not, um, I will end up using the ITV data, and they still understand it, but I get rid of that um, because they'll come back to me with. But, you know, but they understand, it, which is good. All right, trunk systems. Okay, they do allow for an incre increased density over fewer frequencies, but as we've already talked about, they get overloaded rapidly. They're kind of not they're not really a dynamic system. All right, and they're just like a cellular system. They've got nodes, they've got a central point, they've got these receives, and then they've got a central point and receives. If that central point goes down, what happens to it? So, they're down. That area is no longer got to any patients. They're finding out, and they have found out, that city of Baton Rouge put in a multi-million dollar. They spent like $30 million dollars. Putting the 800 trunking system in. When the hurricane came through New Orleans and Baton Rouge, pretty much just about like Baton Rouge off the map, okay, they lost their 800 system and they had nothing. They only had marginal parts of it that functioned and they couldn't communicate. Guess what they have now? They still have their 800 system. That's still their primary. But they went back and re got reauthorized for their previous UHF and VHF frequencies and reinstalled all that equipment. Mm -hmm. So now they're back up. Because that remained functional. The 800 system went back. Yeah. You know, I know the bottom two fire and they said that the places or the 800 system don't work, like in a building or something like that, the 800 system won't work. But he can flip the switch on his radio and go back to the... To the, uh, well, the trucks have repeaters on them. Yeah. Yeah. Because we had that with the Sheriff's Department that first put the um, 800 in our units. Because think about your wavelengths. The higher the frequency, what happens? Sure, you hear this true. So the wavelength, yeah. and the tougher it is to get yeah. through the bills. Okay. It doesn't make it easy to get through stuff. So the repeaters and vehicles helps. Do we have the ability to do repeater operations in the field? To make a mo mobile unit a repeater? Yeah. 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 Sure. Who's got a crossband repeat capable radio? I can talk to my radio on 70 centimeters and it'll rebroadcast at 470. I just got to tell it what to do. So it works out well. How about digital radios? Packet is an older version, and Fort. And here's the thing: I've got that in there because I copied part of that slide from the AWRL. You know, putting some of this together. But 
packet is actually fairly accurate. It's slow, but it's fairly accurate. Okay. So that's what we want to use if we can, these higher end digital possibilities. <clears throat> Store and forward systems, do we have any of those? Are you familiar with those? They're possible to be used as a subset of packet, but it can still be used and set up. There are some states that have actually done this. California has several store and forward systems, specifically for emergency operations. Texas has several. And that's how they actually do their work, is through these types of systems. Windlink, D-Star, Fusion, those are our primaries. Those are the ones for the North Carolina that we're going to use. They are battle proven. They work well. Our Fusion system is just coming up. And hopefully over the next little bit, it, they will become linked together. And we will continue um, to provide that digital capabilities. Nice thing mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, 640 is Fusion and 275, 444, 275. Right now, those two are Fusion. What's going to happen with the 64 machine, if I, if I remember correctly, is right now they're being tested. The Rayner Baptist Hospital, they're being tested. Once the, our contact, Dale WB9SEL, is happy with one of them, with the, with the 6.4. He is going to reprogram the frequency on it and it's going to the mountain. And it will be more similar once he's happy with it. The reason he's got it here is it's a 15, 20 minute drive as opposed to an hour plus drive. And, and it makes it easier to test it, work on it, get it help. Yeah. So it's up and running. Um, try it out. If you have fusion capabilities, try it out, please. What's the neat thing about fusion or D-Star or any of these other digital modes is, right now you can't pick them up on the scanner. You've got to actually have that radio. So it becomes a little more secure for us to go digital with this when we do that. My handheld that I have has a port in it. Um, it's a Fusion handheld. And I've got a cable I can go straight from my sound card to the radio, set this radio over here, do all my digital stuff, and send it. All through Fusion. Right there in the handheld. Pretty cool. These yeah. start can do the same. Do we have these on here? But Charlotte has a D Star. Charlotte's got it, Great has got one of them. But we don't have one for the counties. <coughs> we have Fusion, because that's, that's already used. There is a Fusion network within the state. I'm not sure if we will connect to that or not, ultimately. That's a discussion for the club who owns the repeaters. That's their choice, and there's their discussion. All right, these are just some other modes. Nothing real so hard there. I'll give you a quick reference on this. And I'll actually take a copy of this on a piece of paper and give it and put it up on the website for everybody. That's kind of an idea as to what you can send and where and how. For example, if it's confidential medical type information, these are the way you want to sell it. Send it. Okay. That digi means digital, wind link, courier, things that are more secure. If it's non confidential, you can send it any other way. You can send it by voice, I found a single slide band, doesn't matter. Okay. Casually list. We never transmit those by radio. We never transmit. So, question. Mm -hmm. All of them keep talking about, uh, I guess, the lead communicator and two other communicators. And here you're saying that you can send stuff by CW. What if those two operators don't know? 
And you know you see them. It's only used if people know how to use it. Okay. Now, I will suggest to you that every one of you in here can do CW. Okay. Yeah. My program, my computer program does CW for me. I can no longer do it because I have a dexterity issue where I've I've lost the ability to actually really control it, that fine motor control to control the, the paddle and make it uh, do what I want it to do. So now <coughs> I still do CW, but I do it by software. Mm -hmm. And the software package I have is pretty cool. If Don sends me at 40 words a minute, it recognizes that, it picks it up. If I type in what I want to send him, and it sends it back. At exactly what he sent to me, 40 words a minute. Okay? The gaff turns around and he breaks in and sends it 12 words a minute. I type my response to him and it sends it to him at 12 words a minute. It adjusts automatically. And with the phone, you can get programs that will read. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of ways to do it. So you can do CW, even though you may not know and be able to interpret it by ear. <coughs> there's software packages that can do that. What's the, the, the real The real CW guys that use the paddles say that's not good CW, but hey, guess what? It works. Sorry. About that. <laughs> now, the computers really don't copy that well, but they'll do pretty good. Mine yeah, mine does relatively well. Mine does relatively well. I find it was great to adjust the RF and AF gain because you can only drive it easily. Right. I actually want to tune them back. I use ham radios a lot. It's got a digital thing in it. I just turn the knobs back and it works fine. Right. Yeah. That's what I use ham radios a lot for some more. Works relatively well. Okay. Why don't we take a five minute break? Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm going to do it too, but...